Hi, I'm Trawler Specialist Jeff Merrill in Marco Island, Florida, aboard the Seahorse 52 Paradox 2. Paradox 2 has two engines. She's built in mainland China by Seahorse Marine. Marco Island is a beautiful place to do some trawler cruising. The last two owners have made some great improvements on this boat. They've added air conditioning, a crane, a new dinghy, and active fin stabilizers, Nyad active fin stabilizers. It's actually a sailboat hull shape, the Mandarin 52, that they reconfigured, put a new pilot house deck on it, and redid the interior. The guys at Seahorse Marine do a spectacular job building these boats. I really love this boat. Look at the nice high railings up here. Good horizontal windlass with two anchors ready to go. A lot of great features on this boat. I'd like to show you in person. Let's go take a look around. A very rich and well-appointed interior when you come inside the Seahorse 52. You come through two doors. They're hinged doors with big windows in them. There are windows outboard on all sides. So while you're underway or at a nice anchorage, you have a great view of the outside. But back on the inside, on the port side is a big C-shaped settee, storage underneath, a large teak table where you could have about six people there for a meal. On the starboard side, two of cornice chairs. These chairs have the Ottomans on them. And right above the engine room, the engine room has its best access back aft when you go into the anti-chamber, but you could also lift up the floorboards if you really need to get in there for some serious work. Granite countertop along the starboard side. Laundry is right here. Combination clothes, washer, dryer, very convenient. Working my way a little bit further forward is a U-line ice maker in the central back. There's a liquor locker here with glass panels on it. Dishwasher on the island for the galley right, right out here. Good tally uh, granite countertop, kind of hide what you're doing while you're preparing your magic in the, in the galley. Again, a window over here, some fans, overhead lockers, wine, glass racks, a large basin sink, fresh water tap, and also a pure water for tea or coffee. Seaward three burner propane stove and oven, Whirlpool microwave convection oven, stainless steel uh, facing on it, very attractive. There's a stainless steel backing right back here, a bronze trash compactor, and then a Fisher Pikel refrigerator with freezer. So I have a lot of things going on in this uh, salon and galley. One of my favorite features of the Seahorse is the overhead treatment that they do. This is gel coat and fiberglass with a little bit of a ridge to it. Very easy to keep clean. It's, it makes it bright, really gives it a good yacht finish, and you don't ever get that aging, wrinkling that you get with a vinyl overhead. So great entry level, wonderful for entertaining, relaxing, and then a couple short steps and we're up to the pilot house. Down below the salon is the engine room. There are two overhead hatches in the salon that you can open up. I find the there's a third hatch back by the entrance of the salon that's easier to get into. You come into the antechamber, which has the generator, the C gyro, and the water maker. This is the main engine room, and because it's a twin engine, and this was built from a sailboat hull, the center channel is a deep keel. I'm sitting up on a bench right here with the bilge pump below me, but and I'm five foot ten, so you can see there's pretty good headroom for getting around either side. Back down low, I want to point out that on the outboard side up forward of the engines are the active fin stabilizers, the NIAID active fin stabilizers that were added. Raycor fuel polishers, uh, water separators, some manifolds up forward. Again, I have really good serviceability to the engine, a, a good deep bilge for walking around in. Uh, and one of the really cool features of this boat is the sea chest. So up here forward of the starboard engine is the sea chest. This is a large hole in the bottom of the hull that brings in raw water. And then you can see there's various valves here for the generator, for the engine, et cetera, provides the raw water. So there's not as many intake through holes. There's one giant sea chest. As we work our way back aft, I work my way and find that I've got the thrust bearings for the shaft. So this uh, helps share the load and reduce the stress on the transmission. There's a PSS shaft seal back aft, air conditioning pump outboard, MMC controls, there are two Fireboy fire suppressions in here, two Gulf Coast filters, and over on the other starboard side here is the Nyad 
stabilizer reservoir and also the fuel polishing manifold. So really easy engine room to get around in. And then back in the aft chamber, as I mentioned, the C gyro water maker and the generator. A few short steps up from the lower level brings you up to the pilot house. Your electrical breakers are right here. So very centrally located generator panel, inverter panel, a shelf right here for storing manuals and various things, a couple of drawers, locker, comfortable seat back aft. So if you're along for the ride and you're not driving, you could be doing book work back here, even taking a nap. Good teak table right here. All the windows open up. I have it closed in just to kind of show you how dark it could be at night. If you're running at night, you want to get, try to get all the extra light out of here. Dutch doors open on both sides. Good surface here for chart table. There's storage underneath. Locker forward and a comfortable bus driver chair. Teak helm. All of your electronics forward. A compass. Your two engine panels. Some different control panels on either side. Autopilot right here, your engine shifts, overhead VHF radio, searchlight, your tank monitor, clock and barometer. And from here, not only do you have a great view and you can go out either side, but you would then go forward to the staterooms, to the two heads and the two staterooms. Great flybridge on Paradox 2. Bimini top folding. There's a mast with the electronics antennas. I have my instrumentation right here. There's a chart plotter, autopilot. Both engine controls, steering wheel, helm, throttles. I can see the foredeck from up here. Seating area all the way around. There's even a helm seat right here. And look back at this boat deck. I come down a couple of steps. I'm on the boat deck level, the steelhead crane. I've got room for putting a kayak outboard. Uh, again, the Tohatsu and the Inmar tender barbecue, big dock box. There's some windows into the pilot house. Here's the mast that hinges down if you needed to go underneath the low bridge. And then you have one side deck along the port side here, down a couple of steps. Good railing as I come along here. Dutch door into the pilot house, up to the foredeck. Very flat, uncluttered, nothing missing here. Hatch for the forward cabin right here, some fender holders. Uh, here's where I started out the video down in the chain locker. Two anchors ready to go with a horizontal windlass. And there's a seating area with some built-in lockers back here, a storage locker, propane locker, the reverse rake windows, and then along the starboard side, you can walk all the way back to the cockpit. Again, good, nice high railing. Come down a couple of steps. I have a covered side deck here. Boarding gate. Windows for the salon that are opening. Come back here, compression post for the crane, and then a very large cockpit. From this cockpit, I can get back to the swim platform. There are storage lockers and a cockpit shower back here. Very roomy area. And then there's a sink right here with a little storage locker for some supplies. Access to the lazarette right there. And then let's go look at the interior. We'll go into the salon through the double opening door, which gives you a very wide entrance. Right below the cockpit is the lazarette. It's a pretty roomy area. The steering's down here. I'm going to take the camera to show you what's going on down here. Hot water tank, air conditioning, heater, various valves. There's a wooden floor back here. You do have two rudders, steering, more air conditioning. And that's the crane. So all in all, a very roomy place for extra gear and some important machinery. There is a great amount of space set aside for the living accommodations on the Seahorse 52. We're underneath the foredeck and the pilot house. To get here, you come down the curved stairway from the pilot house. The owner cabin is behind me. I'll get to that to end this, but there is a hallway this hallway is relatively wide. There is a head over on the starboard side, a head and shower. So that would be for the forward cabin or any of the guests on board. Once you come in to this guest cabin, there's a seating area forward with a little landing on it. Comfortable place to read a book, uh, relax, put on your shoes. 
The sleeping accommodations on the starboard side are two bunk beds, reading light for both of them, opening port light, hatch above, and then the other feature that's great on this boat that's very rare is there's a desk over on the port side. The desk has a great generous counter space on it, desk surface, opening port light, lockers, drawers, the swing out stool, and then the, the teak and spruce floors have a, a hatch that lifts up and there's a little fiberglass bin down there so you can put some gear in there. Mirror across the hallway and then here's that head. You have a tile floor, sink, freshwater toilet, and there's a shower over on this side. Then if I come back aft to the owner cabin, good hallway headroom, you come down one step and over on the port side, another desk. So how many boats do you know of this size that have two desks? Big mirror so you could get some work done, put on your makeup, overhead lockers, some shelves, more overhead lockers, a changing seat with a port light, hanging locker, drawers, the island berth bed, very easy to make, very comfortable to sleep in. On the starboard side, more drawers, more lockers, an opening port light. And then I love the head on this boat. If you come up, you come up one step, you're now at the hallway level. From here, I have a Tecma toilet, single basin sink, opening port light, and the shower has a tub. So reasonable tub for soaking in on a cold day, get in here and have a nice warm bath. Great accommodations on the CRS 52, ideal for the cruising couple who is gonna have the occasional guests. And when it's just the, the two of you, you probably she will have this room and he will have the forward cabin for your storage of gear. Really great headroom, generous space. This is a fabulous area. Hey, thanks for joining me today aboard Paradox 2. The Seahorse 52 really is a spectacular boat. It's got a great dinghy on it. There's a steelhead crane. You've seen the interior layout, the flybridge, foredeck, great living quarters with the salon, galley. Really an ideal couples cruiser. Take your friends out, go cruising, shallow draft, twin engines. I could go on and on. You've already seen all this. Uh, what I'd like to do is invite you to get aboard. You can give me a call, send me a text. My phone number's on the screen email me. Love to get you on board. We do showings by appointment. So get in touch with me and let's get you aboard Paradox 2 and you can see what a CRS 52 is all about. Thanks for watching. Hey, great to be underway again out on the water. Love it out here. Thank you very much for watching the video. We have a couple of things you can do. One thing is you can click the bell to get a reminder when we post the next video. We love it when you give us those thumbs up. And then you can subscribe by clicking the button below. Once you've seen a couple of videos, you might also want to check out some of the other ones. So you can click on one of these videos on the side. Thanks. We hope to have you come back here soon and we'll be putting up more content shortly.